first time it's be here for the very first time i'd like to let you know these sessions have been running for over a year so there's over 50 to 60 recordings in a, a spe specific place that we call the air the the, the, the co bank portal so there's a photo where all these are, are set up are placed and if you get this one link can just go there and see what you need. Is it about revenue? Is it about marketing? Is it about legal? Is it about uh, data confidentiality? Is it about taxes? There's so many sessions we've had, and we're here every Thursday, 11 to 12.30. Short and sweet session. We get to have a speaker. Uh, we get to engage with that speaker. They give us some insights for our businesses, practical insights. And we also hear from how our bank can support us. And then we call it a day. So it's a short session every week, 11 to 12 30 and today is no different so we record these sessions and that's where you can find them we'll be sharing the link with you at the end so you don't need to wait for someone to send you an email and things like that get this link and you're in you get to you know it's a buffet you get to choose what you want so we're also going to be using the chat section and the and the q a kindly be respectful as you use that I just some common courtesy would be very useful even in this virtual space all right so let's jump in um a few things I'll need the chat to, uh, side to be very busy. Are you ready for some exercises? I want to see where your mind goes with some of these exercises. We prepared them because we know you guys are exciting people. So let's let's go ahead. Let's see. Um, quick question here. If your brand identity was a car, which car would it be and why? Don't limit your choices to the, the cars on the screen, but which car type? Is it a large luxury car or is it a... Uh, uh, is it a pro box? <laughs> like someone said, ah, we need to have a pro box. Everyone understands a pro box, especially entrepreneurs when we're just starting. You need that car which can carry the children, it can carry the business, it can carry the eggs from the farm, it can carry the supplies for construction, all these different things. Or is it like, you know, no, no, give me a specific type, if, especially if you know cars. Is it a Toyota? Is it a, is it a Lexus? Is it, what, what is it, what is it? SUV, Ford Raptor, uh, Mercedes Benz, a business car. As the more specific, the better. Land Rover, okay. Now I'm not asking your dream car. I'm asking like if your business, if your brand identity were a car, what car would it be, and why? Uh, tell me why also if you can. Uh, Toyota Axio, or oh, is it a Vitz? Is it could be a Vitz? Maybe because it's like you know tiny and gets into tiny spaces. It can navigate. Is it, a, is it a trailer? What? Sam Jora says a counter to ferry out products, buckets. Tata. Ah, David Ndugo. I would like to know why you say the Tata truck. There are many reasons it could be. Let's see. A Toyota pickup. Ah, man. I had an uncle who, who had a tiny pickup, and that pickup, I think by the time they sold it, you guy, um, it had taken us to school. It had taken bananas to the farm. It had taken, like when they came for you for, like when they came to pick you from school, it was like, oh man, not again. Because you knew you had to like sit at the back and it's this bumpy, tiny, like it gets into tiny spaces, but it was not the cool car to be picked up in, but it was very functional. Uh, Kevin says, Vox double cab, uh, Toyota Sienna. Uh, it's a minivan, practical, reliable, or maybe it's a spacio. You know, Spacio, Raum, those cars which are like consumption is very good. It gets you spaces, it's family side, but also can do some work. Okay. So you to highlight double cabin. Let me read Collins. Uh Subaru performance for business logo. Uh easy to notice, practical, reliable. I like that. I like that. Uh let me read just one more. One just says, uh, I know Dennis says Provox. Adi, versatile, good for business. One just says the range, sport specifically, signifies some class. Ah, wait, nice, I like that. Signifies some class, poshy and expensive. Very good. All right, so um, we want to get into our, thank you for the responses here. I want us to get into uh, an intro, a bit of a, a welcome from Peter. And Peter Peter Ndumia is our head of non-financial services at Cobank Bank of Kenya. Uh, Peter, welcome. And I want to ask you the same question. If you think of Cobank Bank as a as a as a brand, uh, which car would it be if it was if it were a car? Which one would it be and why? 
Good morning, Sam. Good morning. Yes, um, I, th I think if Cobank, I would want to identify it with a car, I'm thinking of a Toyota Hilux double cab. Oh, okay, okay, yes. why? 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 Because it's very uh, durable. I think it has a, uh, it's built for quality and uh, it's very durable. And when you look at it, it has, uh, it is able to carry both the, the, the people and also the loads. It doesn't discriminate. And I think uh, as a bank, again, we are you. We are saying we are you. We, we don't discriminate. We work together as a team. And I think double cab is one 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 vehicle that doesn't discriminate, is able to take care of different needs. And I think it's a very, very reliable uh, and it is built uh, to last and is very, very supportive. And I think uh, as Cobank, we are supportive. We are you. Thank you. I like that. I like that. I think it's also good for whether it's in the city or in the village, or, you know, on the tarmac and off-road, it is all weather. I like that. I like that. All right, cool. Let me, uh, Peter, please, I want you to, to go ahead and do the welcome note. Welcome everyone, especially who's here for the first time, and also those who have been uh, traveling with us in this uh, Toyota Hilux double cab for a while. Uh -huh. Thank you. I, and, and for those who don't know, we finance this vehicle up to 95% uh, financing. And uh, very, very good features. Uh, you want to take advantage of some of these uh, products on asset finance. But I think what my work right now is needed to welcome all of us in this session. I hope all of us are doing very well. We are happy with the kind of engagements that you've seen on the chat. And we are also happy because the numbers are great. We are very, very excited because this is where we meet every Thursday for Bank MSME webinar series where we educate us, where we learn, where we connect where we pick tips, and I think there would not be a better place to be right now uh, other than uh, the, in this particular platform. We want to take this opportunity to really welcome all of us in this session. We do this just to make sure that we support our businesses. And one of the things we agreed, we want to take our business to the next level. For those who are in micro segment, we want to take you to the small. And those who are in small segment, we want to take you to medium. And those who are in medium segment, we want you to be corporates. And, and, and we really thank uh, all of you for partnering. We thank you, dear. Uh, we want to thank you, dear, uh, uh, all dear customers, because of the way uh, you've participated and the way you have uh, taken our solutions, our products. You've partnered with us very, very well. We want to pledge that we will continue to support you with all the solutions that we have and with all, all these uh, trainings. So the reason as to why we are here is just to make sure that uh, we equip us. We want to support you to grow. We do this as part of the non-financial services program by the bank, where we facilitate you to, uh, to, you know, to grow with trainings and the tips. Uh, this is in addition to the MSME networking forums that we do, uh, the MSME clinics, the international business trips. And I think some have also indicated that we also have a web portal we have an MSME online portal where we also have these recordings uh, with additional materials that we help uh, you to, uh, to learn more. And I think Fiona has just shared the link. You can just download that link and, and you can get more information on what we do. And so uh, without further ado, it's needed to welcome you at this particular session. Let's learn. We are talking about branding and we want to build our businesses in terms of identities. Please let's uh, engage, let's learn, let's continue to connect. Over back to you, Sam, to continue with the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we've had a little bit about Copa and the work that they're doing and why we are here. Thank you so much, Peter, for all the work that you do behind the scenes. If you know where your emojis are, please help me appreciate Peter and the rest of the team that put in the work to make sure that this session happens and delivering this value to you consistently every week. Thinking business consistency is everything. It's not just quality occasionally, it's consistency. So we appreciate the work that you do, Peter. Thank you very much. Now, let me tell you a little bit about AMI, because this is a collaborative effort between Cobank and AMI in delivering these sessions. Now, AMI, for those who are wondering, okay, who is AMI? What do they do? Well, AMI is African Management Institute. 
and what in the context of what uh, we're talking about, we provide practical management and workplace training to power growth. We know that you have a dream to achieve. We know that the dream is bigger than the individual and it's all always about the team. So it's not just about the dream. Okay, you have a team. Can your team take you to the dream? And if you have a team, does it have the skill? Does it have the ability from management to operations to all the things in between? Do you have the people that you need? Well, sometimes you do, but they need to be a better version. And that's what we help you to deliver. We offer virtual and customized uh, programs across Africa. We're proud of the impact we've had across Africa. Thirty-nine countries where the people have been impacted, and then uh, we have reach and presence across all Africa. So we have head offices in Nairobi, uh, we have a regional office in Kigali, and so many other countries that have country representation. But we are, we are so proud of the work that we're doing because we get to work with entrepreneurs such as yourselves. We also get to work with uh, other corporate entities, and we have great impact together across this continent. So we we are definitely proud of that. Quickly, I wanted to just check with you. This one is going to take like a short time. Um, last time I mentioned, we said the exercise that we, we had a guest who was talking about uh, um, the role that women play in the workplace and how we can look into inclusivity, how we can encourage the women and the work that they're doing, especially if you're men, but also as women, how we can encourage each other. And we took some time and said, okay, so who is a woman that has really impacted your, your life? That was around Women's Day, International Women's Day. And we said, take a moment, give them a call. If you identify that person, don't just, you know, give them their flowers while they can still smell them. So I'm asking, give me some feedback in the chat. Did you appreciate the woman that you told us about in the chat? Your wife, your daughter, your mentor, your supervisor. How did you appreciate the women in your life and in your business? Did you take them out for dinner? Did you buy them something? Did you send them a gift? Please let me know in the chat briefly. I want to do this very quickly, so help me out here. How did that go? Way, oh, did you guys do the homework? Ah, yeah, yeah. I can see some people smiling. Oh my goodness. They're like, ah, where we've been too busy running these businesses. But surely one or two people must have done something. Let me know in the chat. I see claps going, give me a word. Okay, one just says it's my mom and I did send her money. Fiona says, yes, I thanked my nanny and added something small. Kitu Kidoga beat a bit a bit on top of the salary. Well done, well done. Anyone else? In the chat, people are talking about their wives, their mentors, their daughters. Let me see. Ah, wait. No, 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 no. Kevin, ah, 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 come back here. Kevin and Deta says, yes, I did post and tagged her in my timeline. That's my wife. Ah, you guys, this tagging thing is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I tell your wife I posted on LinkedIn and I tagged you. So I hope you're happy. Eunice uh, says, Yes, I appreciate my mom and my mentor with a gift. Well done. And Emma says, uh, MPESA worked. Ah, uh, no, Kevin. Kevin Kevin says in the chat that he, he used a good caption. You guys, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I think, uh, Chesubira, your work is stuck out for us. How do we tell our story beyond even just online? <laughs> Doris says, uh, my daughter's just uh, a kitty. Okay. All right. So let me not take too much on this, but I want to remind us it's really important. It's really important to take time to appreciate people. So in this context, we were talking about women and the role that they've played in our lives. If you really appreciate the work that someone has done in your life, take some time. I personally thought of one particular person who uh, has led me to so many opportunities, a lady in the workplace who has led me to so many opportunities some places I would never have been without uh, her and some work that I've gotten to do, you know, in like moderating and doing uh, hosting events and so on and so forth. And I just, uh, I, I got the idea, I called, uh, uh, what do they call them? Like a flower shop. And I called, made, uh, made, uh, made arrangements and then, you know, she received her flowers, literal flowers, and they were customized with her name. I liked that the flower shop would do that. So, yeah, shout out to, there's a flower shop in, in Kenya called Papping. Thank you guys who are familiar with it. So I did that and I think, uh, and she was very happy. In fact, uh, yeah, it was a very nice story when we when we spoke. So take some time, appreciate people. Don't just leave it hanging. 
Okay. I guess we can extend this and say if you have a customer who is doing who has helped you to achieve quite a bit or they've been loyal, take some time and appreciate. I think even that is part of your storytelling. Maybe that's the case, and we can hear from Chesuri on how that factors into how you tell your story and connect uh, and build a relationship with your people, your client, your community. But let me not preempt all that. Okay, so um let me move quickly to our guest. She's uh, Chesubire Greg, MSME Growth Consultant and Certified Leadership Coach. She's been here before last year. So um, part of the session, uh, from these sessions, we are being very keen on, especially inviting back the people who had the greatest impact on you guys, greatest feedback, and it was very memorable and very impactful from last year. And, and Greg, uh, Mrs. Greg is one of those people. So my personal experience with Mrs. Greg is that when she came on and did the session, I was, even as a moderator, I was so intrigued. And she was talking about how do you tell your story? How do you establish your brand? How do you communicate and make sure you're communicating what you want to be communicating? Or sometimes you communicate and you, you don't realize that it's you're not communicating what exactly you think. So what you think in your head and what you're communicating are two different things. And people, customers, potential clients, all that, they don't understand. She spoke about that and she gave these very keen, very clear examples from the Mamambogas to businesses that were evolving and doing something amazing in how they communicate their branding within Kenya. So it was really interesting. I was so enthralled by it that uh, when I heard that she does a course, a short uh, few weeks course, um, a virtual course, I said, you know what, this is worth it. So I got some money, I sent uh, the payment, and then I was part of a class. Like I think we were like maybe. 10 or 15, and all of us from different uh, fields learning. So how do you communicate your value? How do you use branding? How do you use the social media tools to communicate that? And it was a lot, lot of value. So that's my personal experience with her. On the former side, I will let you know that she is many things. She is uh, she helps SMEs, uh, uh, business leaders, to grow their businesses for sustainable success. She brands herself as a storyteller. So she... she helps business leaders effectively tell their story. So she's many things. She's a certified leadership training coach. She's a certified trainer. She does lots of moderation. She's an SME enabler and resource. She's also a mentor and does quite a number of things and we're going to get uh, in touch with her. I promise you this session is not going to be one of the sessions where you sit like this. No, she's very engaging. Uh, so I, I definitely appreciate that and there's a lot to learn from her. But we're here to Listen to her. We are going to take about 30 minutes between now and the top of the hour. And she's going to deliver. Well, the, the advantage that we had with her today is that she chose to say yes to our request for her to do two weeks. So a few weeks ago, we did another two-week section where we did in the first week. Lots of learning, lots of taking notes, things like that. But then she, uh, she's going to leave us with an exercise where next week we say, okay, so let's practically, what does this look like? So how can we make this you know, get into our business. And that's what we can look out for today. So get ready, get ready, get ready. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fast paced, but it's also going to be very storytelling because she's she has the voice of a friend you haven't met yet. You're like, oh, I think I know this person. So wait for that. But before we get started, uh, more to the topic of the day, I'm curious, just type in the chat, what Kenyan African business, Kenyan or African business tells their story well and why? Which one do you think of when we talk about branding, we talk about marketing. What what does that look like? What does that look like? Who do you who comes to mind? Which 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 business comes to mind? <clears throat> which business comes to mind? Who may maybe and if it's part of your competition, that's fine. You can put it in the chat. You know, because benchmarking is also very useful for businesses. What Kenyan or African business do you feel tells their story well? And notice I said Kenyan or African. I don't want us to start from global side where we say ah apple you know samsung or whoever let's start from here okay um ajab dangote yes 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 so safaricom already got two votes and if you can put a tiny note on why like if you can put a few words kenya airways kenya airways okay let me not differ from you i just had a different a different note, but let me let me not let me not debate that. Um, Safaricom, Cobank, uh, Kevin, nice. If you can add a little bit of why, that would be helpful. Equity Bank, 
uh, Safari Com. So there's many banks that tell the story well. Kenya Airways, uh, in travel, um, EABL on sustainability. Okay, let's see where we go. Uh, don't feel the pressure to put Coprac in the chat, but I'm curious. There's so many businesses that we are part of. And if honestly you feel like my business is that business, put that business name in the chat. Tell us why. I'll give you a minute for this exercise because I know this is going to be very important for the conversation that uh, we're going to have with uh, Chesubire. So this is critical. We're going to take a minute. I want you to put the, na the, the name of the business and tell us why. Tell us why. Tell us why. Ja Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. So let's follow Elizabeth's uh, examples. Um, a job says because they brand kiosks. Okay. <clears throat> okay, okay. Anyone else? A child says Copac on support. Okay, they clearly communicate that they support MSMEs. Very good. Let's see, let's see, let's see. A few more seconds. Please type in the chat what business. Um, so which again the question is what Kenyan or African business tells their story well? Why? Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and read that. So Lynn says Equity Bank, because they, uh, let's see, they even have a TV program specifically dedicated to explaining their products. That's a good way to tell a story. So we learn from everyone. There's always benchmarking and so on. Emir uh, Emirates, efficiency. Uh, let's say Safaricom tells the dynamic of the business as a whole. Thank you. Very good, very good. Uh, Kevin says Co-Bank, because they are clearly financing through loans. Let me see where we have. Okay. So you already mentioned Ajab and a few other brands. Kenya Airways. Sam Jora, I'm curious to what are your thoughts on Kenya Airways? How are they telling their story well? Uh, that's maybe the last one. Sam, if you can respond in the chat, then I'll turn it over to Chesubre. <clears throat> okay, let me read the uh, Lifinas. Safaricom, they're doing well, but they still advertise. Same to Coca-Cola. So they are not like reaching a point where they are like, like we are the ones dominating the market. Let's leave it. They still reach out. Royal Media Group, Citizen Radio, they relate with their audience. Thank you, uh, Capital Bookstore. Okay, so well, I guess we could go more and more into this. Let me not take too much time on this one, but I know that this is going to be helpful. Um, all right, so without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, help me use your emojis. Is uh, MSME growth consultant, certified leadership coach, mentor amongst many things. She helps MSMEs tell their business stories effectively, personal and business stories effectively. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, make the round of applause louder, louder with your emojis. I want to see lots of emojis, otherwise, Greg is not coming. She is not coming. She's going to come with a smile the more you clap. Uh, just it whenever you're ready and the clap is enough for you to smile, then get on. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can get on. <laughs> you yes. Um, may I be allowed to start my video? It says hope yes. has Oh, oh, guys, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Maybe we disabled it so that we we make sure people clap. So I'm oh. going to stay here. Yeah. yeah. So keep. You see how I span the story there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep clapping, keep clapping until we see Chesubire, guys. Keep clapping. Whoever is behind and making sure we get these claps going. Let's keep clapping. Yeah. You see, you see, you see. So that's one way to get the claps going. Let me stop sharing my screen. Chesubire, we are absolutely thrilled to have you back. Welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you. Good tell morning, us what, everyone. What, 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 uh, you? what have you been? What have you been up to since the last you were here? A happy new year and all these wonderful things. But yeah, and then and then I'll I'll turn it over to you. So I've been building. When I came, I was only running one outfit. Now I'm running a second one. You know, as MSMEs, we can't just do one thing. But it's been a time yeah. of reflection. Um, and just looking at how the African continent is going, the stories we're telling as a people, are we having the right conversations, do we have the right kind of confidence, and then working to build the ecosystem that supports that. That's what I've been doing. 
That's amazing. Sounds amazing. Now let me ask you. So you said two outfits, and we asked our guys uh, what car, what car would represent your brand identity. Which car would you choose? <laughs> so, I realized that we're talking about our dream cars, yet we're supposed to be talking about what our businesses look like. Yeah. So I'll give two perspectives. Both my businesses look like a Lamborghini, but in reality, on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Okay. I know. <laughs> Reality on the ground, we are at um, we're not wrong. We are at um. By faith, we are the Lamborghini. Honda, the Honda Step Wagon. That's who we are now. So Honda on the way to Lamborghini. This is the story of our business. Yes, yes. Because you start <laughs> somewhere. I could like, as a complete startup would probably be an alto. Because you are fun or what? You are <laughs> the nice. example of a business and your timing. And then you grow. So your aspiration is to be the Range Rover Sport or like, I love the Mercedes GLE, GLS. That's my oh. aspiration of the brand. But the reality of where I am, in fact, one of them is at this stage because we're small. But yeah, we yeah. are going to the M ML series 350. That's yeah, where we're yeah, wait, don't judge the bits before you see. Yeah? Okay, okay. Because <laughs> exactly. right. we start somewhere and then grow into something. I like that. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to you. And uh, remember everyone who is listening and watching, we have quite an audience today. It's amazing. I think everyone, as soon as they search a super, they said, Ah, oh, we have to be there. So thank you guys for being here. Um, so we're going to have about 30 minutes of our session from uh, Chisubire, and she'll be guiding us. Remember, uh, don't panic. We're going to have her for two sessions. This one is going to be more content delivery and helping us understand some concepts around branding and how do we build, how do we talk about our identity. And then next week, she's going to leave us with some work. Next week is going to be extremely practical. It won't be like a lecture. It's going to be, now tell me what you've done. Let's talk through. Very practical. I'm excited. So handing over to you, Chisubire. Thank you so much again for being here. Thank you, Chimera. So I will run. Guys, keep with me. Take copious notes. If you cannot keep up, don't worry. Um, Fiona has the presentation. You can get hold of it. You just need to ask her for it. So let me give background. All of us think storytelling is a marketing function. So we think it is the guys who are doing the market stuff who need to understand stories. That's fine. But that is not the truth. So storytelling is how you or your brand connect to the community. So your brand, the foundation of your brand building and your brand identity is really in the realm of storytelling and its tools you have. So I will take it from the storytelling perspective and then you'll understand as we go along how it's brand building. So a story is an account of events, the end. They can be true, they can imaginary. But in the case of your business, they must be true because you cannot say we heal cancer and you don't. You cannot say we give loans and you don't. So the story in our case is true. And to tell is to communicate effectively with words either spoken or written with images or gestures. Now, if you keep watching my video, I use gestures a lot because it connects with my audience, the way I need my audience to connect with me. So my running definition of storytelling, which is your brand identity, is the use of words, images, and expressions to convey a message to a specific audience. Mark the words, specific audience, okay? Your product is not for everyone. Have you heard me? Your product is not for everyone. You are not talking to everyone. So who is it you are talking to? So let me ask a question. How many of us have ever seen um, an advert of a Rolls Royce? If you have, put a yes in the chat. Or an advert for a private jet. Okay, the silence tells me none of us have seen, which is true. But where would they advertise a Rolls Royce? Rolls Royce, um, all of them, the Phantom, and then the Bentley series, they are advertised 
at air shows of private jets. Why? Because by the time you can afford a private jet, Rolls Royce, the Bentega, the Aventador are part of the things you can afford, all right? So they go into the space where their audience is. These companies don't even have a social media budget. They don't have a marketing budget for adverts because they have understood that they speak to a specific audience. So that is where we must start building our brand identity. Your audience or target market is the group of people you're speaking to who need to understand your message and respond. So key things to remember, it's a group of people. You speak and they need to understand and respond. So we call them focus group community, your buyers, your customers, your clients, whatever it is you call them. It is a very specific set of people. Very specific set. So if I'm not talk, if I if I'm if my role is around MSMEs, I do not focus on corporates. I do not focus unless the corporate is serving MSMEs. So my my market my target market is very broad because I work with MSMEs and I work with corporates who support MSMEs, but I don't tell the exact same story to them. Okay, so what do we then do? When you need to connect with your audience, you must be certain of who it is. And your audience is internal and external. So let me expand. Remember I said um, storytelling brand identity is not a marketing function. When you woke up this morning as a business owner, if you're married, you said something to your spouse before you left. Your children, you said something before they went off to school, if they even saw you, okay? You will interact with your team who interacts with your customer. You yourself will probably interact with your customer, but you'll also talk to your bank. You will talk to the market. You will talk to the world. So even in that space, you have multiple parts of storytelling. If as the business owner, I haven't clarified for my team who we are, it doesn't matter how good I am. When they meet the client, there'll be trouble. If I haven't defined who we are speaking to, they will bring anyone and everybody to the table. And then we'll be having the fight around, why can't you close a sale? Now, we sell to people who have a recurring need for our product. So who is that person? I must define them and know them so intimately in terms of what they need and how often they buy and what their price point would be so that I can then go into that space and talk and be the selected person, okay? There is a reason why out of all the banks available, you came to Cop Bank. And the one thing I keep hearing is relating to we are you because they actually give us money as MSMEs which means we have tried, we have looked, we have searched, we have tried. And the one place we know we can go to actually get money is Cop Bank. So Cop Bank has understood the reality qua ground knee, paperwork, assessments, onge cash, right? So they have taken it upon themselves to be the ones who actually meet the need. And who every Thursday throughout the year will take time to create space for you to learn. So their brand identity is the foundation of what we need, which is the story they tell. So anywhere you go, the way you'll be handled in the bank tells you you're valuable and you're important. That's a story. The way you go to the website and interact with it is simple enough for anyone regardless of their level of education for them to engage. We are here, 136 of us. Okay, maybe remove five or six for facilitation. So there are 130 people in this room and another number of them who will watch on the portal who know if I come to this space, I will learn. 
Why? They understood who is their customer, the MSME seeking to grow. What do they need? Information and access. Access could be to finance, it could be to community, but they understood what we need. When they figured Monday we are too busy starting the week, Friday we are too busy closing the week, Saturday and Sunday, we are trying to catch up with family. Oh, it is an effort. Tuesday, Wednesday, we are looking for runway. So Thursday, 11 to 12.30 will be the ideal time. It is likely they sat and they asked many of us questions, okay? And where, because this is a bank that spans Kenya, we cannot do physical meetings. So let's go virtual. Pre-COVID, virtual was a headache. We whined, we complained, but it has become useful. And how? Quick, short conversations, 30-minute presentations with time for reflection before and after. So this is what you must do. Your brand identity is not what you think you are. Your brand identity is who people meet, relate with, and respond to. So if I, there were people who are saying, we are this car because it speaks of luxury. Is that the market you are serving? Perfect example. If I showed up in Madare in Louis Vuittons, 65,000 shillings a pair. I will find myself in the air and on the ground barefoot. But that's not even the big thing. Nobody will listen to me because they know I do not understand them. If I showed up in the same locality, in jeans, ngomas, a t-shirt, and a team of people who are from the locality, different response because the market in Madare is different. I know scripture, Paul says, I am all things to all men, but in business, you must choose your audience. You cannot be selling something for 20 bob and something for 100 million in the same shop front. If you are going to span that market like that, then you have to develop individual identities for it. Moja, if we're together, let me see a quick why why in the chat so that I know I'm not talking to myself and that the TV is with me. Okay, I see them coming. All right. So then we ask ourselves, why do we struggle to connect with our target markets? Why do we struggle with our brand identity? Remember, everything you do is audience driven. Your product must respond. So let me use an example given. We named a job as one brand that tells its story well, right? Who knows the name of the company that makes a job? Who knows the name of the company that makes a job? And do not Google. Right now, the answer is whether you know now, now. Please put it in the chat. So a job is made by a company called Grain Industries Limited. Uh, thank you for your honesty, Elizabeth. I like people like you. But we don't even know the name of that company. What we know is the brand that meets our needs. Okay? Now, how did a job start? They began at the coast. And as we go down to Mombasa, we would eat nice chapatis, nice mahamri. We'll be like, unga nigani, ni a job. You come to Nairobi. Mm. You guys don't have a job? Do you understand what brand identity can do? It goes from unfamiliar because of we, we didn't know it to familiar because we have tasted it. So could it be that the reason people do not resonate with what we do is because we are unfamiliar to them, okay? Could it be that we are disconnected using language and examples that do not connect with them? Could it be that we are unappealing? Maybe the visuals we use, they don't resonate. If we're using stock images of people from abroad as opposed to locals that we can tell. Could it be our language is too complex, our tone is wrong, so it does not resonate with the community, or are we just too technical? You see, your brand identity covers all those things. 
It's your personality, which comes from you as the business owner. It is the use of um, words that connect to your community. It is how you present yourself, what people see. I went for a meeting on Saturday and I, apparently somebody had been talking about me in a forum. And this is the response they said, we've heard about you. Thank God. When we met you in person, it didn't disappoint. I was like, Mayo, Kumbe, many of us go to many places that we and we speak and people do not resonate with us when they meet because we have put so much time into preparation. We have presented an image that is not us. And when they meet us, they're like, Allah, you're not as nice as you thought you would be. So when you meet me, have I told you the true story of who I am? That's why when I talk about brand identity, I talk about storytelling. So the impact of stories helps you make deep, reliable connections. Now, remember, your role as a business person is to consistently sell and then get to your customers and get them to recommend others to buy the product. Thank you, Jason. I see to Kopamoja. So if my brand identity is inconsistent, if people don't know how they, my product will show up on the shelves tomorrow, if this year we are blue, next year we are green, the year after we are red, uh, so who am I? Okay? So what we're looking to do is use brand identity as a tool for additional sales. But consistency, which means I want to come back and hear. Do you like the product? Does it still look good? Does it still taste the same? Okay. Then you gather that information and you can use it to improve your product or improve the story you tell or improve your presentation. And when you combine those two things of deep connections and quality control, growth becomes a no-brainer. Growth becomes a thing that just follows you, you know? Growth becomes so stable in your, in your community and in your business that then you become scalable. I remember Peter said, we want to move smalls to mediums, mediums to corporates, okay? So this is the thing you must understand. When you go and look at brand identity, your color is dictated by what resonates with the community. I know somebody who was making a certain type of oil, the, the petroleum-based kind, and when they designed their merchandise, they went to the market and the market asked, what is this? Because their direct competitor was Aramis. So when they tried it, they're like, here come Aramis. And the feedback from the market was, make it look more like Aramis because milking jellies should be a certain color. That's how we understand them. So she went back and she looked at the market and indeed the petroleum jellies for people had a lot of blue in them and has had blue and yellow and orange. So she ended up aligning with what the market and the industry said. So there is indeed a place in your brand identity for your creativity, but you must, 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 must go into your audience and listen, go into your market and understand what resonates with them and then deliver that. So how do you know? And this is where we will stop today. And this is your homework. So listen carefully. You see, your storytelling assessment tool is the foundation for your brand identity. When you go in a market, you must know who you are first as an individual, second as a business, because your business takes on your personality and personality and identity. So what do you understand about yourself? Who are you? How did you get there? What are the experiences that shifted who you are to begin to see things in a certain way? Let me use myself as an example. I'm a storyteller, but I did not start here. I started be, it's sitting in spaces and listening to people struggling to tell stories and it was easy for me, but I had to figure out why it was easy. 
So I'm a third born. I'm the second girl. So my sister, first girl, woo, first born, yay. My brother, only boy and second born. So I'm the third born. I have to find a way to differentiate myself. Okay? My mother did not believe in spoiling last bones. So that was not going to be a factor. So I learned to negotiate for everything. All right? Now I'm number three of three. So the youngest in our family never got their way. That's how I learned to speak. I learned to be mischievous, but over time, my ability to speak positioned me as a leader because what are you telling me? You're bullying me, I speak up. You're being nice, I speak up. There was no forum I was ashamed to speak in, okay? So why is that important? It led me to marketing. I studied administration and marketing, and then I decided I'm not a good employee, so I went into business. I loved business. But then, because of my skill of assessing the situation to tell what's going on, I learned to assess my environment. So I would say as MSMEs, this is what we are struggling with. Look for the solution and begin sharing. That's what has grown me to be a growth consultant, to be concerned about MSMEs. Does that now help you understand? It helped me set up a business, my the one that is kind of the step wagon, to help professionals be able to identify their story, understand it, and tell it. I have people who sat in class in the last three years who are now masters at their craft, okay? So then it feeds into what do I know? Which is the problem I was solving? I'm already on what do I know? I know how to help people talk. I talk a lot. But I also know how to unpack businesses and find the root cause of the problem. So I became what? A business mentor, which feeds into the second business I run. Okay? And then who needs what I know? It helped me understand there are a lot of programs for medium businesses, but micros and small do not have that help. So now we're beginning to build models around how to help micros and small. So when I, def I say, who needs what you know, you must define your customer intimately. Now that word intimately is not just about the bedroom. People divorce your minds from that. Intimately means I know my customer so well that when I meet them, I know them. When I see them on the street, I'm like, ah, Fiona is a perfect customer. Oh, Beldin would be good. And then I can approach her and say, hi, it seems you have a challenge around this. Or she hears me speak and I'm so clear. She can see herself in what I'm talking about. And then the fourth thing you ask yourself is, where are they? So this will allow you to position. I will use Pembe as an example. When Pembe was coming into the market, not, not Pembe, dollar, sorry. When dollar was coming into the market, they went to Western Nyanza with their mail, their maize meal, sorry. And I remember going to the village, one of my friend's villages, and the Ugali was laini. It was nice. So I asked my friend, what is this unga? They said it is dollar. I'm like, who is even dollar? Okay. What they had done is they had understood their customers are the people who like a certain quality of ugali. And they had gone and started there. So they started in Western Nyanza. All right. As those of us who go to the village, when we come back to Nairobi, we'll be like, how many dollar? So they start asking who is dollar. They start looking for dollar and that's how they come. I had a student one day who doesn't like videos. She would prefer to sit behind her camera, her, her office or meet one-on-one. -on -one. And one of the things we do when we do our class is you'd when you have understood, understood who needs what you know, you go and look for five people in your phone book and ask them how they want to receive your content. It was a content class. And her audience told her, they want three minute videos every week on YouTube. 
she hates videos. She would not do it. So you can imagine what that did to her business. Another one in a different class, they said they want in-depth conversations and trainings in her sector. To date, she has developed two courses that are marketable. She has two more courses in the pipeline and she's now beginning. She has done webinar series for the last eight months. What is she responding to? The needs of her customers. If you get anything today, understand your brand identity is determined by your audience, all right? Because you are meeting their needs. Does that make sense? So you must understand who you are, one, as an individual, two, as a business, because there is a need you saw. And that goes to what do I know? What need have I seen in the market that with my skill set, with my tools, I can meet that need, not just well, but absolutely well. And then you identify who needs what you know, which is your customer. And then you identify where they are. Now, this is not a one-off process. You must consistently connect with your customers because your customers will say, right now we don't feel this product because that taste has changed. So if you are able to adjust to them, then they resonate with you. Why do you think car manufacturers are always developing new cars? Because Toyotas are like, okay, so we have the RAV4. That's for the person who wants to go a little bit off road. They're going to shags. But then there are those guys who are just starting out life. So they will have the Vits. They used to have the Starlet. So the Vits is the upgrade of the Starlet. But in the ecosystem, guys are like, but we want to carry things, but we don't want a truck. So there comes the Pro Box. But then there's the urban farmer who wants to be able to carry stuff, but they want to look kind of cool. So Toyota developed the SAF and they have other things in the ecosystem. So they are a brand that listens to their customer and delivers products, but their products are based on the needs of the customer. We know German engineering gives you A15 quality cars at an A15 price point. So if I want my GLE, GLS, there is an ecosystem of income I must build to get to that place. Your brand identity is not just colors. It is how you talk to people, how you understand them, how you meet their need, and how you show up. So I think I will stop there because that is really this is where we are going to sit for our conversation through the week and our homework. We, um, there is indeed um, an assessment template you'll be sent with some guiding questions to think through. What I want you to do is go back to your business because each of you has a business. Go back to your business and from this lens, assess your business. From this lens with the guiding questions, assess your business and ask, do I understand myself and what I bring to the table to help others? And this is who I am. This is the need. So what do I know? This is the need we meet. And there's a series of questions under that. And you have to identify the individuals who will recurrently need you to serve or solve that need. And where are they? And this helps you understand why some of your products are not reaching the right people or the sales are not what they are. It will give you feedback. And when you're looking at your customers, go and talk to them. Go and talk to them and they'll tell you, eh, working, mm, not working. And things like that will go for it. So I'll give it back to you, Sam. I know I always call you Chimera, but I'll give it back to you in case there are any questions. Still appreciate all well, this definitely hard work that has gone into this, but you do this so flawlessly, and I want to appreciate you for that. Please, a big round of applause, big round of applause, big, 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 big. 
where if you don't make it bigger, the lady may say we are not coming next week. So make the thing bigger. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are very good on our time, and thank you so much, Suria, for practicing that discipline as well. We want to take about 10 minutes and uh, do a Q&A. So if you have a question, put it in the chat. Maybe you want her to go back to something she said that she said, oh, I didn't quite, when you talked about personal and business planning, I didn't quite get the difference. When you talked about why people are, are, we are where we are failing to communicate what we are communicating, what is the challenge? If you have a specific challenge, you can put it in the chat. Also, if you have an addition to this and you've been learning along this and you've gotten some value that you want to share with us, you can put it in the chat. So let me take a few seconds and look at the chat. And maybe while you're doing that, you can go ahead and get uh, to Subira's contact, uh, contact. She's been kind enough to share uh, work lines. So she she did not tell us about what she does with the specific two outfits. So Kiko stories, and then the the new one. I'm not sure what the name is, but I at least I'm familiar with Kiko stories. Um, so the email is there. The, you can also email the business and also uh, her line uh, on on LinkedIn. So I'm just giving a few seconds. Maybe as Chesubiri takes some water. I know it's been we've had you speak 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 quite a bit. Um. Let me so see. Let me so that we have. See. Let me quickly see. Yeah, what yeah I go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, so yes, yes. Akiko Stories is the one you know where we help business leaders um, execute strategy with storytelling. So we this the the last slide I've given you we we help you do the assessment. It's a course we run, so you can come in and sit with us and we'll step by step take you through the the assessment in a learning environment. We also do content in that, and we do training around matter storytelling and communications. The second outfit is called African MSME Collective. We realize in the SME space, we have so many people doing very many things, but there is a lack of focus on the micros and the smalls, lack of adequate focus. So what we do, we enable businesses to set up, uh, stabilize, scale, and thrive for sustainable success. That means we work with ecosystem players in terms of if they need like facilitation and stuff like that, we support them. We work individually on mentorship coaching through different um, trainings and events to just ensure that SMEs have everything they need. Around Conversation, which is a YouTube channel. So we do, we have three shows on YouTube. We do community, which is connecting with different community groups and helping them learn. And we do the three things we do. Capacity, which is the training. Good. Wow. Clearly, you've been busy and you're not just telling us to put the work in. You've been putting the work in yourself. That's amazing. I realize but, as a mentor, I can't ask people to do things I am unwilling to do. Wow. Okay. Okay. But, well, someone is asking, could you go back to the question on why we failed to connect? And that's the one which had from unfamiliar to technicality issues. Could you just go back to that and speak a little bit of, just for clarity on just touch a bit more on each of those? Okay, so the reason we do not connect effectively with our audiences very often is because, one second, let me close the chat. We are not as familiar with our audience as we should be. So yes, I know women buy my product, but what demographic, what, in, what income level, how often do they buy, all right? So if it's milk, families buy milk every day, but how what quantities? So if you look at milk uh, milk uh, companies, in certain sectors of the market, they have 250 mLs. In others, it's half a liter and one liter. Why? They know that in this locality, the families cannot afford to buy the one liter. But if they take the 250 mL, it will be enough for tea. So they're familiar. So your audience, their audience is very clearly defined. We sell milk to everyone but our audience has these segments. So your that's proper audience definition. Disconnected means if I come here and talk, I, I speak one in a language that you do not, so disconnected means I use and feel unfamiliar examples. So I come here and I'm talking about when I used to live in America and I was buying things by the dollar and I was living and I start talking about certain neighborhoods that don't make sense to this community. And then I use um, unfamiliar expressions. So we are British-based. Okay, we used to be British-based. 
So I grew up speaking English, but British English. Currently, what we speak is a blend between British and American English. So if I steer to um, using of words that people don't understand, some of my mentees have told me they've learned to read the dictionary because of me, then we lose connection. So that's disconnected because of unfamiliar language in terms of vocabulary. And appealing, when I speak to you, do I look the part? Do I look like you can trust me? When I send out communications, are the images I use visually appealing? Do you connect with them? If I'm calling myself an African brand, but all the images that I put on my social media are of Caucasians, of, of white people, of Asians, you will disregard me as an African brand. Perfect example, look at Coca-Cola. Their ads on the African continent have a lot of us, our skin tone. Their ads in America now, because of the whole racial divide, have to have every race represented, okay? Language, this language, let me use it, let me take it to tone. How do I speak to you? Am I respectful or do I talk at you or talk down on you, if that makes sense? When I speak to you, is it in a way that you feel that I am talking to you or am I above your head or am I beneath you? And then technicality. If I sit here and I talk about narrative building, character assessments and things like that, it doesn't make sense. If I sit here and I start using jargon like CTA, why don't I just say call to action instead of CTA? If I come and talk about yeah. ESG, why don't I talk about economic, social, and governance principles? So that's what this slide is about. These are the things that disconnect us from our audiences. Fantastic. Um, quite interesting. Okay. Um, I really want to dig into that, but I'm going to hold myself back since you're coming back. I'm so glad you're coming back. But let me let me ask. So for your um, just translating one of the questions here. Um, Colin says, uh, my question does does this branding also involve online face-to-face -face and also moving from one place to another as you keep going. Maybe if I may modify the question, how does what you're telling us affect the, the platforms online, offline, on ground, you know, on air, all those things? It affects you this way. You must be one person in all these spaces. Business people understand me you cannot go and be nasty to people online. You have lost the freedom to be that. So if you look at me, if you go to any of my online spaces, the way I've spoken here, the way I'm smiley cheeky, but I'm very well put together, my online spaces match that. There is no space to be one person online and one person offline. You must be the same person. So what you have to do is and that's why it goes to the intimate understanding of your audience and of yourself. Because if you're a nasty person, please stay out of the limelight. Please. So online, if you uh, go... <laughs> I'm serious. I was gonna, I was, but I was going to say Gary, Gary V gets away with uh, some nastiness, but I guess Gary that's his branding v, also. No. The thing about Gary V is he uses curse words. But if you watch him often enough, he has explained his stand. So then if you cannot understand him, we walk away, right? Okay. Oh, okay, so basically clarify who you are, let people decide. Yes, but be true to who you are. Be one person. If I meet you in person, remember my example, the young ladies who said, we have heard about you. Now that we have met you, you, have, you do not disappoint. So when people meet your brand somewhere, there's an expectation of who you are. So then if you come and put up as, as weird, the word in my head is wonky um, photo. So if you go to LinkedIn, there are guys who photos, they're, they're just weird. You lose respect for people. You're like, who is this? Send me a LinkedIn request without a picture. I'm not connecting to you. You could be a bot, you know? <laughs> So you get judged in all the spaces. So learn to be one person in all the spaces. So if your brand is warm online and I call your customer service hotline and your person is rude, that ends. I'm yeah, like, hotline. Yeah, 
So you need to be one person and your brand needs to be one person online. So that is why we go back to those four things. Who am I? What do I know? Who needs what I know? And where are they? And then work to give them the best experience ever. Can I add uh, Elizabeth's submission along the same? So there's the other option we're told about benchmarking. Who's doing it well, you know, you know, line up to that. So Elizabeth's asking, must I make my brand look exactly like my competitor who is who is doing big things, you know, for she sells Unga Oji. And uh, I've used blue for my so, uh, flower packaging. I find some supermarkets suggesting I use green as the big look. Is that, what do you say? Exactly like, no. No, <laughs> okay. don't don't copy because you when you make yourself exactly like, then you open yourself to um, suits for uh, copying. You know all those information. Yeah, exactly like no. If there is an industry standard, align to the industry standard. And I think if you look at a lot of the Ujis, they are in greens and browns and those kind of shades. So maybe I go to pink to stand out, but it, is it working in the industry? Remember my example of the milking jelly? Certain industries align to certain things. So if you look across the milk industry, the colors are three, white, blue, green, but blue is the prominent color, okay? So if there's a way your industry aligns to certain colors, certain shades, what you certain colors, what you can do is play around with the shade. Because also, listen to the supermarket guys. I was in the supermarket on Saturday, on, on Sunday, and I was asking about a certain brand of rice. And the supermarket attendant said, by the way, this brand, and he ran through for me all the products that that brand has. And when you looked at them, the product all aligned to industry standards, but the products were, ad were across different, um, some was unga, some was rice, some was tea, some was juice, but there were similarities in terms of that segment of the industry. Um, I had a question. So let's say right now, my business is a Vitz, right? <laughs> I'm on my way to the limo or to the Ferrari or whatever it is. How should I present myself? Should I present myself as the Vitz so that I connect with my fellow Vitz customer who is on their way to their Ferrari world? Or do I project a, we've heard a lot about why you need to project yourself as uh, big and all these things. Should I project, my name is Chesubire, should I project my Ferrari uh, version? Or I mean, how do you deal with that? Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. So identify what is the dream and am I, what am I working towards? And then present yourself as that with where you are. So let's, let, me, let me make it clearer. My end goal is to be big and efficient, right? I start small and efficient. If efficiency is the key that I want to, be, to build into my business, I start with it from the front end, okay? It doesn't matter that I'm a Vitz in terms of the number of people I serve. So when you start, you must know what your end game is. If your end game is to be a market leader, what are the characteristics of market leaders? Start building those from the beginning. Don't say, we will improve as we go. Be the best you can be with what you have now. So if I have 20 bob, how do I efficiently um, use my 20 shillings knowing my goal is 20 billion? This is what I say to entrepreneurs. If you can't save when you have 100 shillings, you will not save when you have a billion. If you can't be kind, efficient, faithful, consistent when you have one customer, you will be none of those when you have a million customers. So begin with the end in mind. The being a Vitz is not about the quality of your product and service delivery. It is about the size of your ability to deliver. So if I want a product that can 
retail a million pieces a day. It has to be at a certain quality. I start with the same quality when I'm selling two pieces a day. So you determine where you're going, who you need to become, and who you, you start with who you are and grow to who you need to become, but you start good. If you start careless, not bothered, I promise you, you will carry it through. But I'm absolutely loving this. I know we could go for hours, but both of us are, are we are paid to speak. <laughs> so what I want us to do is, <laughs> what I want us to do is, let's go to the last slide. Talk us through next week's exercise. Um, and as you move there, I'm just reminding everyone, next week we are coming back. So this has been more delivering concepts and this and that. What we want to do is we want to share the tool with you. Uh, Chesubi is going to share this slide. She's been generous with that. She wants to share this slide. But she's also going to share a tool with us that she works with some of our clients. Kench has been really generous with this. And thank you, Chesubi. What we're going to do is work through the tool, answer these questions. And when you come on to next week, uh, sorry, reach out to Fiona, who I'll be reminding you about. Uh, we will be giving um, like about four people Four people uh, about, I think it was like four or five minutes to share what they came up with, having used the tool. And then uh, you'll get direct feedback from Chesubire and just some insights on how you can improve your position in terms of your branding and so on. So please pay attention as uh, Chesubire walks through in this last minute also, and then we'll, uh, we'll start landing our plane. Chesubire. So you will get this document. And remember, there are four questions you must answer. What we intend to help you do is to cross-check whether you are in the right place, talking to the right people. So you will answer these questions. You can see, let me use who your customer is. When I said intimate definition, these are the questions you must answer. What's, answer? what's their age? What's their gender? How much can they spend? What do they believe? Um, what do they want to use this product to become? When you answer these questions, what it helps you do, it gives you a roadmap. You see, there was a question of, are you the same online or offline? You must figure out where they are. I meet a lot of my clients online. Um, so there is what I must do to be online, but also in the physical, there's what I must do. Assess yourself. And the thing I need you to be, dear inter fellow entrepreneurs, is be honest. And I promise you, this assessment will be hard because up until now, you think you got it. This assessment will show you areas of weakness or uncertainty. Dig deep and think about yourself and your business. Apply these both to self and businesses, all right? The assessment will help you figure out whether you even know what you're delivering to the market. Are we together? That will help you then, because next week we'll use it to identify what, what is the truth of our brand, because your brand identity and reputation is not who you think you are, but what your market thinks about you. So this, the place of customer, talk to your customers. The place of what problem you solve, the customer will help you even understand if you're actually solving the actual problem you identified in, in number two of who needs what? What do I know? All right. It's a very simple exercise. Just run through the questions. If more questions than these come up, because these are guidelines, add them to your evaluation. And I will stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. A big round of applause. I'm going to share, uh, let me just share my slide here, where you can see Josubri's contact. Uh, let me just pull that up real quick. Bear with me here. There you go. I'll just share that. So for those who are, are, are not yet gotten uh, Chesubiri's contact, there's a number here and there's an email here if you want to reach out. Again, what we're going to do is going to share this uh, exercise. Next week is going to be very practical hearing from you. You're going to be speaking, presenting, and we'll be using that as the frame for our learning about branding, how we can tell better stories with our businesses. All right. So again, a big round of applause for Chesubiri. Uh, Please don't get tired of clapping. Please don't get tired of clapping. Chesubira, thank you for the time. Thank you for making this worth our while. And we know that the lots of learning has happened. For those who are worried, oh my God, are we going to get the slide? Yes, you are going to get the slide. Fiona will be sharing the slides and, and we'll be benefiting from that as well. So we're looking forward to next week.
Okay, so I want to invite Peter uh, just to remind us about our CoPunk's commitment to our SMEs, also in line with helping you tell your story and supporting you along that journey as well. So Peter, please come on. And then uh, in the next five or so minutes, we will be uh, finishing our session. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sam. I hope, uh, Fiona, you're able to enable me to put up my video. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. We can hear you very clearly. Oh, great, great. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sam, and many, many thanks to Chesubile. Chesubile, that was very, very good, very good presentation, and I can see the participants are really appreciating the way you presented and even the practicality of this the session and the topic. And I'm excited to look forward to what we are going to achieve and even learn come next week. I think next week is even be more practical. I just want to encourage ourselves to be ready. We even invite our friends and our relatives and our partners so that we can really learn and be able to apply some of these sessions. So I think uh, Sam is ready to commit ourselves to, as a bank, uh, support us with the, the, these trainings. And over and above these trainings, we still support you with solutions. We still have the uh, lending solutions that we have as a bank. If you are looking forward for working capital, feel free to talk to the branch managers and uh, relationship managers. You're looking for... Uh, asset finance, mortgage to acquire some uh, properties. Uh, we want to invite you to, to please partner with us, share your needs with our business bankers because they will be the bet uh, they will be at a better place to support you with all these solutions. I think the other thing is that we encourage you to continue uh, leveraging on our digital solutions. Uh, take advantage of our COP till uh, you know solution, our uh, you know MCOP cash. Uh, our accounts, our COP online, just to make sure that you're able to receive your monies and you're able to pay your, you know, uh, for your to your suppliers very, very well. Take advantage of this uh, MSME online portal. I know Fiona had shared the link. Uh, we can get a lot of these recordings just to make sure that then we uh, learn. If you missed something, if you missed a topic, if you missed any session, uh, you can go to the Knowledge Hub and you can get more details. So our call, uh, and thank you, thank you, Fiona, because you've shared the link again. Let's us download. Our call is to really encourage all of us uh, to uh, have very, very close contact and close engagements with our business bankers and our branch managers because they will understand your business model and they will support you with all the other financial solutions that we have. So we commit to continue supporting you because we said we are you and uh, we continue to support you to grow uh, as our partners. So I think those are the comments that I have, Sam, and uh, thank, thank you to our customers because we have seen you in these sessions and you continued to uh, implement the things that we learn. And we also appreciate because you've been attending all these sessions. So those are the comments that I have, Sam. Over back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so just a, a few things you may need to know. We are coming to the end, like about two minutes away from the end. I've been mentioning Fiona for a while. Fiona is the marketing project coordinator for this particular project, and she helps us to put these sessions together every week. If you have any communication you'd like to make to Fiona, this is her email. This is the number that you reach out to. Fiona, again, will be, when you are getting into the session, you shared your email address. So Fiona will be sharing a couple of things to you, uh, including the slide from today, but also the tool that you can use. And during the week, reminder, if you feel you've done the work and you're ready and you'd like the opportunity to share and get direct feedback from our guest speaker, you can go ahead and reach out to Fiona, let her know you're ready. Of course, present it in, our, I think, a one or two slides uh, format so that we just keep it tight the time so that we allow for many people to share and then give you direct feedback and, and input from everyone. So that's Fiona, you can reach out. Um, lastly, if you want to reach out to Pop Bank, uh, you can reach, use the numbers on the screen. You can uh, also uh, use the contact center numbers that are on the screen. There's emails there. There's also a WhatsApp line. And I think you'll find that very, very helpful. 
But once they thank you for being here, we like to end with a prayer. Now, someone has made a really nice comment here. I think it's, uh, it's such a compliment. Wanja Nyaga says, when I grow up, I want to be Madame Chesubire. <laughs> so that should be good. Madame Chesubire, um, uh, we appreciate you being here. And I noticed that uh, behind you, there was, I think, a Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, the whole chapter. So since faith is such a, a core part of you, and that's something you share with uh, the full bank, I'd like you to, if you don't mind, please say the prayer for us in closing. Uh, that's okay. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you for your grace and mercy, and we bless you for the gift of wisdom. When you created us, you created us to be beings of influence and impact. You called us into spaces to cause transformation. You called us, oh God, to be your hands and your feet, your heart and your mind, to be every part of the body that will bring strength to the community. And when you called the continent of Africa as the cradle of mankind, you said that from this place is where life starts. I pray for every business, not just the ones on the call, but every MSME in the nation and on the continent, that your lifeblood will flow through us, that we will turn into a community of people who are focused on transformation and supporting an economic growth, not just growing our stomachs and being fat with property. I pray for everybody who's taken time to be here today, that you would bless the work of their hands. You will take their feet into spaces that they can have influence and impact. You will give them insight and wisdom to answer the questions of their community. You will cause them to see needs and meet them. You will give them compassion that when they get to the end of the day, they will say, truly, life has been valuable. I pray that out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water, that they will find strength to do the assignment. They will understand commerce and trade is about transformation of economies, and they will commit to do their part. And thank you for Copbank and the ability it is giving MSMEs to stand. We speak a blessing over it. We speak peace and tranquility in the buildings. Wherever they are located, we speak growth and capacity to transform and expansion of who they are. We pray for AMI that you would blow their work across the continent, that their impact will truly be seen and felt that from this day forward, anyone who interacts with anybody in this space, in this webinar, will see transformation. We speak blessings and any business that has debts, that has um, targets to meet by the end of the day, may each of us experience a move of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chesuvire. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a blessed day and a great week. See you next week, 11 to 12.30.